Peace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's believed that Paul's second letter to Timothy is actually the last letter that he wrote in his life. Writing to Timothy, who was a companion of his on several of his missionary journeys and who is now currently, at the time of this writing of this letter, uh, serving at the church in Ephesus. And Paul was writing to him uh, to encourage him uh, to continue in what he had learned. In a couple of minutes, going to take a look at portions of, of this letter. So if you want to take out a pew Bible and follow along, we're going to be on page 1855, 2 Timothy chapter 3, page 1855. Last week, we concluded our, our series of looking through, walking through the, the book of, of Acts. And as we ended last week, the book of Acts ends with the Apostle Paul in prison in Rome. After a long period of going through trials and shipwrecks and eventually ending up in, in Rome. And uh, it doesn't give us a conclusion in the book of Acts to the, the life of the Apostle Paul. But as Pastor Mike pointed out, uh, the book of Acts ends making the point that it begins with. And that point is, you will be my witnesses. Um, not only for the apostles, but for all followers of Jesus Christ, for all believers, witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it ends, Paul in prison, but while he's in prison, he's witnessing to the Lord Jesus Christ as he shares the love of Christ with all in every circumstance and situation that he is in. So to come up with what were the final years of Paul's life like, we have to go to the various writings, of his letters, and, and various uh, verses of what he says, and it's believed that Paul was set free from prison in, in Rome, and for a period of maybe four or five years that he went out on another missionary journey, possibly even reaching Spain. But eventually, Paul is arrested again, back in Rome, in prison. And the second time, he's not going to be set free, but he's going to be executed. This is probably about four or five years after um, the, where the book of Acts ends. And so Paul, as he knows that time's running out, he writes another letter to Timothy to encourage him and also to encourage him to come see him. And, and Paul in chapter 4 of, of 2 Timothy makes reference to the fact that he knows his departure is near. He says, I have fought the good, the good fight. I have run the race. I have kept the faith. And he knows what is coming. And so he writes to encourage Timothy to continue in what Timothy has learned. Timothy's father was a Greek. His mother was a Jewish Christian. And his grandmother was also Jewish. And so Timothy, growing up as a young boy, grew up in the knowledge and the understanding of the Scripture as his grandmother and mother taught him Scripture. And then he learned also from the Apostle Paul in his journeys with Paul. And so Timothy, or Paul, as he writes to Timothy, encourages him to continue in what he has learned. And the reason Paul writes to encourage him is because Paul knows the challenges he's gone through and also the challenges that face not only Timothy, but every follower of Jesus Christ. And so now wanting to take a look at specifically the text in, in, on page 1855, but actually a few verses before where our reading began today. I invite you to take a look at uh, verse 10 of chapter 3, where Paul writes, You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, 
the persecutions I endured. And so Paul says, Timothy, you know what I've gone through. Partly because you were there during some of those experiences. You know the opposition I experienced. You know the persecution I went through. And even those that you weren't there for, you've heard me talk about them. So you are familiar with what I have experienced, what I have gone through. But he also says, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. That the Lord was with him in every situation, every circumstance, and the Lord was guiding him throughout the whole journey. Now, last week, Pastor Mike pointed out that the last couple of verses in uh, the book of Acts, Luke records that the Apostle Paul was boldly witnessing without hindrance. And we think, wait a minute, Paul went through an awful lot of stuff. Persecution and being arrested and shipwrecks and snake bites and all of these things. What do you mean without hindrance? And that's because the Apostle Paul recognize that no matter what circumstance happened, he continued to be a witness. That's what we are by our identity as Christians. We are witnesses of our Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever the circumstance was, Paul continued to be a witness. And that's why he could say, through everything I went through, everything that happened, the Lord saw me through. Verse 12, he says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Wow, that doesn't sound like good news. Everyone who wants to live a good life and follow the Lord Jesus Christ will be persecuted. You know, that's not the only place in Scripture that says that. That says that there will, will be opposition to those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And even to the point of persecution. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. There isn't anywhere in Scripture that you can read that says, you know, once you become a Christian, life is easy and there's no more problems, no more issues. It doesn't say that. Because even as followers of Jesus Christ, even as Christians, we continue to be sinners who live among sinners in a sinful world. And because of that, there will be problems, there will be struggles, There will be opposition. There will even be persecution. And so then the Apostle Paul says, as our text for today begins, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. And here the Apostle Paul say that not just to Timothy, but to each and every one of us. But as for you, Continue in what you have learned. For Timothy, he had learned it from his grandmother and from his mother. The love of God and the blessings of God. As as he says, as you've been convinced of, because you know those whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Timothy knew from whom he had learned it. There was someone in our life as followers of Jesus Christ that helped us to come to know the love of the Lord. Someone the Lord placed in our lives, whether it was our parents or a family member or a friend, sharing the love of Christ with us. And as we have come to know Christ and His love and His blessings and His grace living as followers of Jesus Christ. And that the Scriptures reveal that truth and that good news for us. Verse 16 is a great verse to memorize, and that's our memory verse for today. And it starts with, all Scripture is God-breathed. All Scripture. Old Testament, New Testament, breathed by God. It is God's Word, His inspired Word. 
that God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, inspired people throughout time to write exactly what the Lord wants us to have in His Word. Moses and Isaiah and Jeremiah and John and Luke and Paul. As God used them to record exactly what He wants written for His people to, to learn and to grow and to read and to know what the Lord is saying as the Lord speaks to us through His Word. So all of Scripture is God-breathed and it's useful. And then there's a list of things given of what God's Word is useful for. The first is teaching. God's Word is useful for teaching for us to come and understand what God desires us to know about certain things. What does God want us to know about sin? It's in the Bible. What does God want us to know about forgiveness? It's in the Bible. What does God not want us to know about His love? It's in His Word. It's in the Scriptures. What does God want us to know about relationships, about marriage, about friendships? What does God want us to know about handling money and finances? It's in the Bible. What does God want us to, to, to know about caring and being compassionate and loving towards one another? It's in the Bible. What does God want us to know about baptism and the Lord's Supper or worshiping Him? It's all in the Bible. And so, in the Scriptures, God's Word is useful for, for teaching, to grow in our understanding of what God wants us to know about a multitude of topics, about living life here on this earth, about death and about heaven and the hope that we have for all eternity because of Jesus Christ. God reveals it to us so we may grow in our understanding as the Word teaches us. A second useful, ta useful thing of the Bible is rebuking. That God's Word rebukes in regards to our sin. God's Word reminds us that we are sinners. Just as we began our worship service today, confessing our sins, agreeing with God that we are sinners. And we are, every one of us. We're born with a sinful condition. We come into this world born in the same nature as our parents, going all the way back to Adam and Eve. John, in his first letter, says, if we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Or if we claim not to be sinners, we, we declare God to be a liar. We are sinners, and the, and the Bible points out our sin. But the Bible also tells us the answer for sin. And there's only one answer. And the answer is not, we got to try harder. The answer is not, we got to do more and, 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 and go to church more or, or pray more. The answer to sin is Jesus Christ. The only answer. The answer is, we have a God who loves us so much, who desires for us to be in a relationship with Him as we live here on this earth, and a relationship that will last for all eternity, that He was willing to come into our world in the person of Jesus Christ, to live for us, to die for us, to pay the full penalty for sin, that we may receive forgiveness, and live in that forgiveness, and live in His grace. But it's important for us as Christians who, who know the love of Jesus Christ to still be reminded of the fact that we need Christ always, every day, because we continue to struggle with sin. And we continue to experience sin as, once again, we live as sinners among sinners in a sinful world. And the only answer is Jesus Christ. Teaching, rebuking, correcting. There's a whole lot of messages in this world today, right? Everywhere you go, whether it's in books or media, um, whether it's on TV, the internet, there's all different kinds of messages. Or messages from friends and family. What's the truth? 
Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God's word is truth. And so God's word serves to correct. It helps and guides us as we hear various messages to go, but what is the truth? And to be corrected and guided that we may live according to the will of the Lord. And understand how is it he wants us to live with one another as we live in this world. And the last use that's mentioned here is training in righteousness. Righteousness is a gift. Christ took all of our sin and took it upon himself on the cross and paid the full price. And Christ gives us his righteousness as a free gift. His holiness and his righteousness. Training in righteousness is seeking to grow in the character and the competency of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians that we are to imitate Jesus in the way we live out our lives. Imitate him. Be, be forgiving of others as he has forgiven us. Be compassionate towards others as he is compassionate towards us. Be loving and caring. And so our, our desire and our will and is to continue to grow in the character of Christ and to continue to grow in his competency as, as God calls us to be his representatives as we live here on this earth in the way we live our lives, that people may see in us the love of Jesus Christ, the care of Jesus Christ, as we care and love one another. Paul finishes this with saying, so that the man of God, which can also be translated as the messenger of God, so that the messenger of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And everyone who knows the Lord Jesus Christ and is a follower of Jesus Christ has been called to be a witness, is called to be a messenger of God. God doesn't just call us to faith and then leave us on our own. He equips us. He gives us all that we need to live the life of a Christian, to live the life of a follower of Jesus Christ, and to be his representative as we live on this earth. And he equips us through his word. And the power of the Holy Spirit working through that word in our lives. So that we are equipped for every circumstance and every situation. God doesn't leave us on, a, on our own. Just as the Apostle Paul said, the Lord saw me through everything. And the Lord sees us through everything. Everything through the opposition, through the difficulty, even in cases of persecution. The Lord walks with us. He equips us and he gives us his word for our blessing and our benefit and how important it is for us to be in the word as God teaches us through this word, as God rebukes us, but also heals us with the message of his love for us in Jesus Christ as he corrects us through his word and as he trains us in righteousness. And how desperately we need God's word because, yes, we continue as followers of Jesus Christ to be sinners living among sinners in a sinful world. But the answer is God who encourages us just as Paul encouraged Timothy Continue in what you have learned. Stay in the word as we hear the, the God equip us and strengthen us to live as his people. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.